Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got the, uh, am I meant to say pleasure of playing in the tier 9 Chinese light tank. This is the WZ-132A. Unfortunately, this vehicle is in the position of being the second worst light tank in the game with regards to its win ratio and also with regards to helping its players achieve a win ratio that is a kind of above and beyond what they're able to achieve. Now, the reason why I highlight that is because recently, as you would have seen on the channel, the awesome tanks, sorry, Tomato, Chi Chi website, both of them are incredible websites, has added in statistics of a tank's win ratio, which is a difference between the actual skill of the players who are playing it. Now, win ratio as a raw stat on a vehicle, well, of course, if it's the kind of tank which a lot of sweaty people like me would like to play, it's probably going to be better than if it's kind of the first time casual players playing water tanks that gravitate towards a vehicle. So what Tomato GG has been doing is taking the average win ratio of the players actually playing the tank and then kind of subtracting it or adding it to the actual win ratio that the vehicle is achieving. And so you get an idea of what tanks are actually best at either kind of like improving you as a player, so to say, or should I say giving you better statistics, which is a better idea of what the most overpowered and worst tanks are inside the game. And this one, it's it's second from worst. The only one that's worse than this is the T-49. But I think the T-49 probably gets a bit of a, a rough story there because it does have a derp gun and a lot of people just go and play it for a bit of giggles and not to play it seriously. So I'm playing today on my Plays for Free account and this is where the pain begins. This account for light tanks is so darn painful and my heart goes out to any of you who, uh, who try to play light tanks without the benefits of either really good equipment, really good crew skills, or just a premium consumable. Light tanks, it should go without saying, the view range is possibly one of, if not the most important statistics. And so a premium consumable in World of Tanks increases your crew skills by 10%, which actually results in your view range increasing by about 45 to 5%. Now that difference, which is the main difference between my free-to-play account and my main account is that I refuse to use premium consumables on the free-to-play account, makes such a tremendous difference between the two accounts when it comes to light tank gameplay. When I'm playing something like an autoloader or I'm playing something like a mouse, it's not really the biggest of deals. The premium consumable doesn't make my armor thicker, nor does it reduce the intraclip reload on an autoloader. However, on a light tank, that view range, the gun handling, the accuracy, the aim time, everything just seems to be feel so much worse. And when you're kind of a tank that can do it all, like light tanks can and medium tanks can, without the premium consumable, boy, does it feel awful for these cyclical guns. One of the biggest pains that I have when I'm playing my light tanks compared to my main account is that I, for example, have to take coated optics because my view range isn't high enough to be able to get to like 450, 460 without coated optics. And so I often have to then lose an equipment slot that I would put into something like vents, which then makes everything about my vehicle just 3% worse, as well as also not having the 5% the better performance from the consumable. And so before I find it, everything about my vehicle has to be 8% worse on this account because of the lack of vents and the lack of premium consumable compared to my main account because I just have to take coated optics because otherwise I'm never going to have enough view range without the premium consumable. It really shows you how important it is to have that premium consumable on a light tank to then be able to invest your statistics in other areas, either with the field mods, because you can even reduce your view range to be able to increase your camera rating with quite a lot of vehicles. That's another reason why this account is just so painful, is because I actually have nearly all of the vehicles blueprinted now. The account is, uh, I guess it's going to be five years old now, five years old at this time of year. But I've actually got to the stage now where all I have to do is kind of grind the tanks to be able to get the modules on them. And then after I finish grinding the modules, I don't actually have to play them when they're fully upgraded to be able to get the next vehicle because I've already got enough blueprints so that I can be able to kind of like skip that or it's already been done for me with the random fragments. And so the account has been pretty brutal recently because I've been not actually having to play the tanks when I've got them elite. So I'm just limping through with them in an underpowered form with no field mods. And as soon as I finally get them there, I'm on towards the next one. And now that Wargaming has just nerfed the top of the tree as well, it's made it even more brutal to be able to get through the, uh, the stock tanks with no more five times experience games. And so that is the state of this 
vehicle. And you might be noticing, uh, QB, why are you using a durability device on this tank? Well, again, that's me min-maxing, not actually having to get the tracks on this vehicle. Unfortunately, there's no way to be able to equip the top gun on this tank unless you'd have the tracks. And the top gun is so nice, it's probably one of the only good things about this vehicle is this 100 millimeter with its 320 alpha damage, that the idea of skipping, uh, well, should I say skipping the gun because you don't want to have the tracks, was more painful than dropping the exhaust to use a durability device. Now, this doubly sucks when I end up on a map like Malinovka or Prokhorovka when I'm playing against tanks with better camo now and I don't have the exhaust to be able to help me out, and I don't even have the vents to be able to make everything else better about the vehicle. So that is just a sacrifice that sometimes free-to-play players, I, I guess they don't have to make, but it's a decision that I will make to skip the 25,000 experience, because I now need to race my way through, and I found myself actually grinding without five times experience missions. I know, right? That's how entitled I guess I became to the five times experience games on this account to be able to uh, to get towards the next vehicle so I can buy the WZ1321 while it's discounted. I'm definitely going to make it. The top of the tree ends this Sunday for the current month. And I know that I'm going to be able to get there and be able to pick up the M5Y and the WZ1321. But I don't even know why I'm so excited because really the WZ1321, I think it's the worst tier 10 light tank by far, at least for enjoyment for me. The turret armor on it just doesn't really make up for all of the horrible aspects of the vehicle. But... What you're going to see here today, ladies and gents, is all of that pain, all of that suffering, all of that horrible playing of your stock tank without the crew, without the equipment, without the field mods, sitting there and just seeing other better tier 9 light tanks either getting trounced by a char 75 or just being unable to stop an ELC even 90 from sitting in a plant pot anywhere on the map and being able to dig them out. What you're going to see is when it all feels like it's worth it. Because I'm the underdog, right? I'm playing on my free-to-play account. I'm playing a semi-stock ta tank without the tracks or the engine. But I still have my awareness. I still have at least a 100,000 games of World of Tanks experience. And maybe, just maybe, we can make a comeback into this game where we're down by 4,000 hit points and down by a couple of vehicles with some sneaky plays. All right, so the WZ-132 in this scenario, I chilled out towards the north for as long as I could, trying to hope that maybe some of the tanks were going to push. And then I realized that it, this battle wasn't going to win itself in that regard. And sometimes scouting and holding positions is not enough to, to win the battle. So instead, I decided to come across to go and get some vision down towards the M48, get some vision on the T-55A and try and apply some pressure because I knew that as soon as the ST two on the enemy team made it into the base, that would just be the end of it. Well, luckily, with the vision that I got on the M48, they've been taken out. And with a bit of crossfire on the T55A, while I've lost a lot of hit points, I've allowed the Leopard on my team to be able to create some pressure with the WT, as well as also give my LHMTV a little bit of a respite to now possibly make a comeback in this round. We're still down by 3,000 hit points and a tank. The enemies have got multiple tier 10s left alive and we've only got one in the form of the Leopard. So in this situation, I really don't think that the priority should be here. The LHMTV is asking me for help, but the ST2 could turn towards me. I have to kite. And what I was thinking in this scenario is that if the ST2 just follows around a tier 8 light tank that's on 50 hit points or so, then that's actually a good result for us. Whereas I have to finish off the medium tank in the center and I have to also try and help out against this FV215B183 while also there being an S1. So in these kind of scenarios, when you're outnumbered, if you can try and lead... Well, LHMTV is the one who's leading him here. Leading the ST2 on a wild goose chase and taking them out the game. And instead, that can then give you the freedom to be able to focus on the other tanks. Remember that even if they have, you know, a, a, a tier 10 heavy tank on a third of their hit points, if the LHMTV can just goad them into following them, for a while, then that might allow us to be able to get the overmatch on the other area. Unfortunately, I get spotted, the S1 destroys the Leopard, and the Leopard also destroys the S1 when he set him on fire, so a bit of an eye for an eye there. And here we go, ladies and gents, it's me on 142 hit points and an LHMTV on about 50 against 2,200 hit points of top tier vehicles. 
Let's see what we're able to do together. Okay, so in this scenario, I knew that my advantage is that I'm a fast tank, and that is a derpy vehicle without a turret. I have to get in. I have to take the fight to the enemy team. And because I see that the ST2 on the enemy team is in the cap circle, this is just the opportunity of get a turret mate. Okay, the ST2 has left the cap circle now, which means that he's going to be coming for me, which means that I need to stay behind this Effie, but I'm also trying to get them to go side on so that when I know that the ST2 is going to appear, and oh dear, a low roll there. Now I've got this awkward situation where I've got to mirror the moves of the Effie while he's trying to get me to not hide behind him, to finish him off while the ST2 is there. Now this ST2 is going after us, but this British tank destroyer is a rather nice shield here. The LHMTV looks like he was coming back towards me, but I just say in capitals, CAP. The LHMTV presses affirmative, and thank goodness the L L LHMTV listened, because now the pressure is on the ST2, whereas previously the pressure was on us. They still have four times our hit points, and they are higher tier, but every shot that I get in here with these micro movements is going to lower that amount. The ST2 trying to go for me, trying to go forwards, trying to go backwards, whiffs a shell, four second intraclip reload means that I can come round and put another round into them, and suddenly the over 2,000 hit point advantage the enemy team has is no longer there. Now, shout out to Deep Down in the chat who's given me some rep in the chat as he calls it. And now I knew with only a minute left, there's no way the SD2 is going to be able to get back there. So I decided backwards, forwards, give the SD2 a little bit of a wiggle, bait them a little bit. They missed the shot and we put one into the lower plate. LHMTV gives me a thanks. I give them a thumbs back. And I tell you what, this is why you play the free to play account, right? I put myself in an unfavorable situation with my equipment, with my refusal to spend free experience to unlock the tracks so I use a durability device instead. Without the crew, without the field mods, when all of the paid advantages are no longer a factor, boy, was this a feels good game to get through. This one outnumbered, outgunned, but still not outdone. And seeing that ace tanker, I, I would say that it makes it all worthwhile, but uh, uh, I don't know, all of the pain and suffering and probably the stomach ulcers that have come from getting through this vehicle, uh, it might not be the case. But I must give a massive shout out to Skitsy on our team for their awesome work in the LHMTV, for keeping calm, not tilting out, distracting that ST2, finishing off the artillery, and also putting pressure on the ST2 with the cap. There's no way I would have been able to do it without you, Skitsy, because your distraction gave me the confidence to actually go for that FE, to go for the ST2, whereas if I'd been by myself without the cap pressure, I don't think you would have forced the mistakes that the enemy made. So this was an Orlix medal for the WZ-132A for destroying higher tier vehicles with a light tank, and we made a nice meaty profit, although a lot of that was for the personal reserves, or should I say missions that were paying out. So playing the game for free, saving your free experience in case Wargaming make an overpowered vehicle in the assembly shop, it has its price. You might have to trade a little bit of your sanity when you're sitting there with the wrong equipment without field mods and not even having the top tracks and engine. But sometimes when you're, you're giving yourself that handicap and you're putting yourself as the underdog, Boy, can it be some of the most satisfying games of World of Tanks. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below whether you have bothered with the top of the tree this month or do you feel that it's just not rewarding enough anymore to be worth your time. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.